What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and we're back in Space Engineers and given that I've been working sort of on and off on the next gen carrier behind the scenes, a bit that are going to come in sort of upcoming videos that are a bit more complex stuff, but also I've been doing a bit to do with the structure of the ship itself. I thought it was about time I gave you an update of sort of how the build's going and show a couple of the sort of smaller features that I've built in that aren't worthy of a video on their own. So in front of me here we have sort of as it's progressed so far, and there are a few more bits to this, but this is the sort of the main body as it currently sits. Uh, and down this end, we've got the hangar system that people will be familiar with. Uh, and in fact, let me just jump straight in and show you what this is all about. So I have a little seat down the back here just for convenience. If I jump in here. Okay, and press one to activate the real deal, the main hangar. Uh, and I'm really pleased with how this whole thing articulates and opens up and even how pleased with how fast it's capable of moving given the size of the thing. But in here is the sort of main hangar bay. Uh, when I say main hangar bay, this is the main hangar bay for craft that need repairing work, craft that need resupplying work, or just craft that aren't actually part of the carrier fleet as standard. So stuff that won't have its own dedicated positions and dedicated docking ports. So in there we have obviously those big hangar doors, and if I jump out we can go and have a look at those and a few of the other features. So these big hangar doors are articulating on a pair of rotors, and that's how come it's so stable, is there is one of these at either end. Uh, and they are working on the basis that they're going to turn almost 90 degrees, and so I could sort of make the corner of a circle. And that's sort of what this platform is trying to become. And I've had to dig a little trench down the side here for the sort of edges of it to fit into, but it's nothing... Nothing too massive, nothing too untoward. Uh, and these just hinge up back and forth in these little gaps. On these, at either end, I've got a sort of pillar support. And then there's nothing in the middle, obviously, to keep as much space in the hangar as possible. And combined with that, in the hangar, we also have up here a couple of little um, welding drones, sort of repair drones. And they're hooked into what will be the conveyor system, although at the moment it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, and they've also got these two landing gear either side, and the idea there is that once they're parked and in position, ready for flight, you can turn their engines off and lock them in place so that they're not going to jiggle around, they're completely safe up there. But as soon as a ship comes in, it's taken any battle damage, then they're in position, ready to repair it. And as you can see, we've got loads of room in here, we've got a couple of vultures sitting down there, we've got the chaff deployment craft over there, and there's room for so much more in here too. And I will probably end up putting a some sort of buggy system, some sort of car system for moving around this uh, sort of main artery of the ship, which is what this area we're in here is going to become. Uh, then the other part that I've done on this, aside from sort of the main structural work, and I quite like these, I don't know, these almost cathedral-like arches. Uh, I think I might try and keep that a bit of a theme. Um, obviously, visually, the outside is very sparse at the moment. It was mostly the work was done getting this hangar and these side pods sorted out. And the idea with these is, with this ship, you're going to have a lot of craft that are projector based and you're just going to have a lot of craft in general and a lot of the time it's going to be quicker and easier to not bother actually going and repairing and sort of recovering those craft but just grinding them down and getting rid of the thing so i'll just close this up and flip around so that we can see the back end of the uh, the ship because if i turn the bars on i have a few other things in here as well so if i hit three that's triggering the old hangar system inside but obviously expanded to run now 12 ships and as you can see they've all just pinked into existence uh, and then I can hit four to as before flip those sort of carrier flip doors over and reveal all of the drone fighters and then once they're in position we can launch them as we did before and we've now got 12 of them rather than six of course so hit five and they are all going to take off and they'll be accessible through the menu and the idea here is that I would jump in, be one of the pilots of these various ships. I need to grab the camera out. And I would be one of the pilots on these ships on a mission. So just fly out with this thing and there you go. I am no longer on my landing pad. I have escaped. And once the mission was done, say I've come back, I've been damaged or perhaps potentially even not been damaged. I mean, these things are a little fiddly to park at times. I would come over and literally just deposit myself in one of these bays here. And I've started setting them up with a sensor system, but um, that system needs to be configured for each independent bay. So it's not quite done yet. There's a few bits I want to fix with that. But yeah, if I just position us in here and then I can jump back to this view and you can see fits in there nice and easily and all I would do is turn on the grinders with seven and turn on the pistons like that and in a very Star Wars-y sort of fashion 
uh, and in a somewhat laggy fashion you'll notice the FPS has dropped even more now as all of those grinders are working away and the pistons are working away but if we get over here we should find that the ship is slowly being torn to pieces and it'll sit there underneath there's a whole bunch of collectors and a gravity generator that only covers the size of that bay itself and so any pieces that are missed anything that drops down will be collected as well and the idea is the entire sort of fleet here that aren't really large ships so all of the smaller ships in the fleet will just come back and be get got rid of from this fashion and then rebuilt as and when they're required and that's going to be part of the sort of next gen theme of the carrier so just quickly while this is grinding away i can show you how in fact i say while this is grinding away i tell you what i'm going to fast forward it because i can't do anything with this frames so I decided it would be quicker if I just jumped into uh, another world and I can also show a few other bits about how I put this thing together here. So uh, jump in here, I've made a little hole to show you the piston side of things in these sort of grinding bays. This is relatively straightforward, the only thing that really takes any sort of concern here is making sure that you've set things up with more than one piston on a grid. So using the merge trick that I explained in the last video, making sure that you've got these four pistons here so everything's really super stable. Uh, and then the rest of it's just been done by surrounding with glass doors so that you've got that little bit of clearance you need but at the same time it seems like the thing is nice and sealed and it's not a room full of holes. So that's those, I mean, the only other thing you need to do is make sure that they're the correct distance apart so that the... Um, pistons don't actually touch each other when these things are at full extension there is a single block gap down the center so when they're fully reversed this sort of block here is is empty essentially right the way up uh, and they will still grind that distance of course but it means that there's never any problem with them grinding each other uh, or any problem with them colliding with each other so the other part of things is getting this big door to function like it is. So I'm going to go and start it swinging and then I will talk a little bit about how that works. This is still on one. Uh, and this is this is the slower version before I got my uh, confidence up to turn the speed up. And in fact, this thing seems to be able to take a huge amount of punishment. But anyway, if I look at these rotors, you can see that they're very, very tightly packed in, like packed in to the, tight, the level where you couldn't get that normally with a rotor. Uh, and it's been required to have two to make this thing stable at all. Of course, if I only have one at one end, and then you know, they're both like that. If I only had one at one end, then this thing would be hideously unstable. So the main deal, aside from that, was th these little trenches, they were built afterwards. I built a, a simple framework with two ends uh, and just enough sort of material there to hold those two ends together while I worked out what spacing I needed around it to fit this in. And you can, by reversing it between the two positions, slowly build it up so that you get this sort of effect here where in fact that's so close together you wouldn't be able to place a block there but by moving it around you get the opportunity to put the block down when it's not there and you also get the opportunity to see sort of how tight the fit is but the other thing with this is is getting those rotors to line up so just in case anyone's not sort of familiar with that particular trick i've got a little rig, rig set up over here so if you imagine i mean this is pretty much what i was talking about if you imagine this sort of with this as my my door and i have my door pre-built here as a section uh with these these spars coming down the bottom and i just know that i want it to kind of look a bit like this and then you can imagine that this is sort of the hangar bay just as that frame i set up as i mentioned and on one end you have your rotor with the head on and on the other end you have a rotor without a head on and often what you need to do is re take this rotor and um reduce its distance back to the absolute minimum so if we do that here i need to go and grab a control block do. so we can take the displacement right down shrink it right the way in uh, and then it's literally just a case of grabbing your device let's grab this and grabbing it from the point at which you want it to copy and paste obviously uh, and you can do this as well, by the way, with, if you're not in creative, you're trying to do this in survival, you can do this by getting a ship with landing feet on it and actually positioning the part in the same place, in this same sort of way. And then if I manage to get it lined up right on the rotor head, there we go, I can click that in place. And of course, that's only connected at one end at the moment. But if you come back here, the rotor part, this thing, has no clipping on it. So I can then click it into place there uh, and by going into the control panel again, we'll be able to attach that rotor head on at this end as well. The whole thing is going to freak out a little bit. And one thing that can be really helpful is if you turn the braking torque on on both of them and turn them both off before you connect them, because if there's any mismatch in the two settings, it will freak out and spin around like a lunatic. 
and then it should be connected. If it doesn't connect immediately, one trick I've found, and I, I don't understand particularly why this works, is um, to paint it. Just does just find a block somewhere on it and paint it a different colour. And there you go, you see that? See it jump? It, it updates the model's position somehow, and in doing so, connects it up properly. So this is now connected at both ends. Both of these rotors will be giving us a position. So current angle zero, current angle 360. And as long as we remember that these need to rotate in two different directions, we can, are they both off at the moment? Yep. So we can set this to, as long as one, one's a negative figure and the other one is a positive figure, this is now connected, solid, and you just gotta remember that they are connected. So any change you make to one, you wanna make sure you make this, that change to the other one in reverse. So if we toggle this on now, it's gonna not start turning because it doesn't have any power. Do, do, do. How can I not have a reactor in my list? That's terrible. It's gonna turn and then it's gonna break itself, almost certainly, but anyway. You get the idea and you can see that those are now both connected and it's lovely and stable and stable enough that when it does collide with this I'm sure it'll do plenty of damage at that end. And that's about it for as far as explanations go for this one I think. I mean it's not been a it's not been a particularly complex video but I felt it was about time I brought an update on what exactly is happening with the next gen carrier and what it's starting to look like a little bit. Loads more ideas still to come for it but I really want to try and get this finished now so I can move on to a new project and also so that I can get my FPS sorted out. So thanks a lot for watching guys. If you enjoyed it please hit like, please hit subscribe. It really helps me and the channel out and otherwise I will catch you next time. Thank you.